right, you guys. So we have a lot to go over. First things first, let's talk Miss Portia Williams of the Real Housewives of Atlanta. So I don't know what the hell is going on with Portia. Okay, she better be happy in love in the words of Miss Beyonce. But girl, like, what's going on? I've been telling you guys that I feel like she's been moving way too fast when it comes to her new fiance, Simon Guabadia, who is the soon-to-be ex-husband of Portia's co-star, Fallon. Okay, if you want to call her that. But um, y'all, the plot has thickened. Portia is on her show, Dish Nation, with Gary with the T and them, talking about how she got Simon's name tattooed on her. Okay, right here behind the ear, his middle name. I'm in the Twilight Zone. Check this clip out. I got my fiance's middle name no, tattooed on my neck. Yeah. You got your what? You, you got your what? You got what? Simon's I name got my... on your neck? His middle name tattooed on my neck. Yeah. Portia, you mean to tell me that you've announced this relationship which rocked everybody's world, okay? Social media went up into flames. Then Simon announced on social media that you guys were engaged. Then you go on to Dish Nation talking about how y'all going to have three wedding ceremonies, really working overtime to really, you know, normalize this relationship. And now you coming out again on this TV show talking about how you have Simon Guabadia's middle name tattooed behind your ear. What's going on, sis? Okay, what's going on? Can we pump the brakes? Okay, can we pump the brakes? Now, I know Portia is getting older. Okay, she's pushing 40. 40 is calling her name. Simon Guabadia is about what? 50, 55, 60 at this point in time. And so, um, you know, I do understand that once you become older, when it comes to love, sex, and relationships, Older people really don't have time, okay? They don't have the time to spare and they just want to go ahead and get it in when they can. And so I understand that aspect of it. But Portia girl, let's bring it on down in the words of Miss Candy Burris Tucker. Now, I kind of honestly feel like she's only being forthcoming with all of this information because she has a new spinoff, because the ladies are going to start filming the new season of Real Housewives of Atlanta. And so she wants to let Andy Cohen, Bravo, NBC Universal, Truly Original, and everybody else know that she has a storyline and she's ready to start filming, okay? Child, this thing is a whole mess. You know it's real when you get the man name tattooed on you, all right? And Portia, I do not want you out here looking like Lavania, okay? And we're going to talk about that a little bit later on today when we go live. But quiet as it's kept, y'all, LaToya Howard and her boyfriend, Von Ray, are no longer together. And I could have sworn those two got matching tattoos, okay? A whole hot ass mess. But um, I did want to share this tweet from a fan off of Twitter. Um, I believe their name is Beautiful1323. They took to Twitter to give their theory on the whole Portia and Simon situation. And they said, okay, here's my theory. Never has Portia been so forthcoming when it comes to her relationships. Normally, she keeps stuff pretty low key, especially if it's a messy situation. I don't remember her talking this much about Dennis early on in their relationship, okay? Then the fan goes on to say, she barely talked about her and Cordell's marriage until it was over. Okay, that's some true tea. She says, either this is a fake relationship for a bizarre storyline or Simon's immigration status is in jeopardy. So they have to fake a relationship publicly for them to get married and stay in the United States of America, okay? So first off, do I think that this is a fake relationship? No, okay? I thought about it, but honestly, I just don't think so. I don't think Portia would go out on a limb if she really did not fall in love with this man. Like, I wouldn't be doing that, okay, just for a check. Absolutely not, like Portia has money. And I think that that's the thing that we're forgetting. A lot of people are trying to paint her out to be like this desperate woman who can't take care of herself. But we've seen that she's been taking good care of herself for a couple of years now. And so I don't think Portia is desperate for money. I think she truly does love Simon. With that being said, um, you know, the whole immigration status being in jeopardy theory, that could be true. Okay, now that he's no longer married to Fallon, maybe he's, you know, in shambles trying to find a new American wife. But my question is, why Portia though? 
right? Simon Gwabadia is very capable of finding a woman because allegedly he has a net worth of $40 million. I'm sure there are a lot of eligible bachelorettes who are willing to sleep with that man because of the moolah. Okay. And so it is what it is. I don't know. Do you guys think that these theories have some truth to it? Let me know down in the comments below. All right, you guys. So moving right along, speaking of Portia, let's talk Lauren, Portia's sister. Um, I did want to give you guys an update on her fraud case, right? And so a couple of days ago, I came to you guys with a story because a company by the name of Lil Fox Boutique actually came out to the blogs and exposed Lauren uh, for, I guess, being a fraud. They reached out to her because they wanted some Instagram promotion for their apparel. They ended up sending apparel. Uh, Lauren agreed to promote the apparel on Instagram. A couple of months later, she never posted them and she kind of just went ghost. Okay. Lauren went ghost. And then uh, the company, Lil Fox Boutique, came out to the blogs and said that Lauren and Portia are thieves and they are frauds. Well, you guys, we have an update. Around the same time the company went to the blogs to expose Lauren, she did end up posting the company, okay? So um, just in case you guys cared, Lauren isn't a total fraud, but she'll end up doing the right thing once you put the pressure on that ass, all right? Moving right along, let's talk Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. I very quickly wanted to show you guys this clip of Miss Dorit um, going after our favorite housewife on the show, which would be Garcelle Bouvet, who is the first and only black housewife of Beverly Hills. Um, with that being said, yeah, let's go ahead and watch this clip because uh, Dorit is really asking for it. Okay, girl, you are really asking for it. And right now, you on my bad side. Check this out. So who is acting a bit too much? Who deserves an Academy Award? Not been too authentic. And I will say everyone is either saying Sutton or Garcelle. Garcelle for me. Now you guys, I'm not going to say too much about this situation because at the end of the day, who is a Dorit? Okay, the only thing that she brings to this show is fashions because she don't have a storyline. She doesn't bring drama and there's no real substance to her. With that being said... Y'all heard her say that she feels like Garcelle is the least authentic this season and she believes that Garcelle is acting, which kind of threw me for a loop because I could have sworn Dorit had a fake British accent. Okay, y'all remember that? The true Beverly Hills Housewives fans will know that that's not Dorit's real voice. Okay, you have a fake British accent. Uh, your marriage seems pretty fake to me. Okay, very inauthentic. And you move from house to house to house for whatever reason, we don't know. So who's really acting? Okay, who's really acting? And then quiet as is kept, not to make everything about race, and I know I'm going to get a lot of hate comments, okay, under this video, but I find it really funny how, you know, on the first episode, Dorit got really dressed up to go to Kyle's house, okay, to go see Kyle and Mauricio. She was wearing her Versace and her heels and her neon leggings, like looking really cute because she is a fashion girl. But as soon as she went to Garcelle's house, y'all, this girl had on leggings, some Nikes and a damn wrinkled crop top. Like she was finna work out or, you know, run errands or go to the grocery store real quick. I just thought that that was really telling. Okay, I thought it was really telling. When you go to the white people house, you dress up. When you go to the black girl house, you look like who did it and why. I don't know. Okay, I'm not saying it's about race. It's just an observation. So let me know how you guys feel about the situation down in the comments below. Very quickly... Um, speaking of Beverly Hills and everybody over there in California, I did want to mention candidate for California governor, Miss Caitlyn Jenner. Now you guys know that for the past couple of weeks, we've been talking a lot about Caitlyn because I don't know, she's just being extremely weird, right? And she really thinks that she can become governor of California. Okay. Which I think is okay. You know what I'm saying? Confidence is key. However, you guys, she took to Twitter Okay, this girl took to Twitter and said something so dumb, so stupid, okay, so less than smart that I just had to share it with the house guests, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and put the tweet up right here. Caitlin said, when elected governor of California, I will cancel cancel culture 
and wake up the woke. Hmm. That is really interesting. Okay, Caitlin said, when I become governor, as if she's really going to become governor, which is laughable to some people, she said she's going to cancel, cancel culture and wake up the woke. Girl, you sound so dumb. Okay, so silly, so stupid. Especially when California is suffering from things like a poor economy, okay? Uh, people is dying from the covert. And then on top of that, you got all types of wildfires happening. And then you want a site that is due to forest mismanagement. Caitlin, it's time for you to grow up, okay? If you really want to become governor, let's talk about the issues that matter, okay? Let's talk about stuff that people really care about. Okay, and canceling cancel culture is not what people care about. I mean, that's a cute line, right? That's a cute line to throw at your base of conservatives and Republicans. But um, I feel like we should be canceling student loan debt instead. Okay, how about that? <laughs> how about that? So let me know how you guys feel about y'all's possible California governor coming out saying she gonna cancel cancel culture. Now, Last but not least, I did want to talk Miss Trina, okay, from the 305. Shout out to Miami. She ended up doing an interview with Tammy Roman on her Fox Soul show. And I really wanted to show you guys this clip because I thought it was interesting, okay? Tammy asked Trina, who is the best female rapper, okay? The best female rapper of the last five years. And y'all, I was shooketh at Trina's answer. Check this clip out. Who's the best <laughs> new female Bye. rapper in the last five years? I'm gonna say Cardi B. All right. I mean, Trina, if that's your opinion, then fine, okay. Okay, if you think Cardi B is the best female rapper of the last five years, that's incredible. She definitely is the top selling of the last five years as far as the new girls are concerned. Um, however, for one, I feel like she's only doing this or saying that because she's still kind of salty at Nicki Minaj, okay? I know she tried to play it off and act like Nicki didn't really hurt her, but I truly think that Trina uh, was hurt by the fact that Nicki Minaj did not want to do her music video for that flop of a song called Babs. But Trina, Cardi B as the best female rapper, it's going to be a whole no for me because lyrically, Cardi B is trash. I think just her flow is trash. And then on top of that, I heard the girl don't even write her own raps. And so that's another point taken away from Miss Cardi B. Now, of course, I do give credit where credit is due. I do believe that Cardi B does have really great performances. Okay, she's a performer. You cannot take that away. I feel as though she's a fashion girl. Her looks really do kill, especially on Instagram. And I think she has a great PR and marketing team. However, in my humble opinion, okay, and y'all know I'm not really into the rap world, but in my opinion, I feel as though Doja is the best female rapper of the last five years. I mean, she has the fashions, she has the freaking performances, the music videos, the visuals. Um, she's just so creative beyond anybody else, okay, that's out right now. And um, she can sell, okay? She can give us a little bar or two. And then uh, she can come out with a pop song and really dominate the charts. And so it's going to be Doja Cat for me. Okay, it's the cat for me. But I want to know what you guys think. All right. Leave a whole bunch of comments down below saying who you think is the best female rapper of the last five years. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up right here. If you guys like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. And I will see you guys a little bit later when we go live tonight. Love you and don't forget to create a great day.